Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. Today, I'm excited to be bringing you guys another set review, and this time we'll be reviewing the 2020 Panini Diamond King set, which is set to be released on Wednesday, June 7th. So without further ado, we're going to get right into it, and we'll take a deep dive to all things Panini Diamond Kings. So, in this set review, our intent will be to get to the exclusive sensational set ranking. Now, what is that, you ask? Well, the exclusive sensational set ranking is where I take this set, the Panini Diamond King set, and break it down into 10 different categories based upon everything from pack odds to the inserts to the autos that are available and we rank those on a scale of one to ten we add all those up and that will give us our sensational set ranking score which will tell us how good that this this set lines up against other sets that have been released in 2020 and historically against panini diamond kings in the past so what we'll do is we'll take a deep dive into the following areas first we're going to go over the set highlights what does this set offer to collectors we'll go into the different buying formats so the different ways that you can buy into this we'll uh, dissect some of the key cards and then we'll get into who should be collecting uh, this set who should not be collecting this set and then we'll deep dive even farther into the inserts the different autos you can get the relics this is a big time relic set and then as a fun part of the breakdown we'll dissect all the different team sets that you can get into um, in order for you to be very educated about what sort of teams you should be targeting and breaks and whatnot and that will bring us to the overall positives of, positives of the set the overall negatives of the set which will all culminate into the one cent sensational set rating which will tell us how good this set really is and then we will take that and compare that to all the other sensational set ratings that we have done already throughout the 2020 season and we will see how this stacks up to all the different sets that have been released so without further ado let's get right into the set highlights first of all there's one thing that you do need to know about panini diamond kings it's an artistic ode to the generations of baseball. So that means you're gonna have a bunch of older retired players, Hall of Fame players, new players, rookies. It's basically a 100 year uh, uh, ode to all things baseball. The set is in its sixth year of production. Uh, so the set started back in 2015. The checklist this year is 170 cards and cards number 101 through 170 are short print cards. So the higher the number, the short, uh, the shorter print that they become. Um, in every hobby box, you are uh, guaranteed to get one auto and one memorabilia card. And it features retired and Hall of Fame players heavily throughout it. However, that does not mean that there isn't rookie cards. All of your big rookies are in this set as well. The other neat thing that is very true to Diamond Kings throughout its history is it has an extensive lineup of relic cards. The relic cards um, are, some of them are really cool. We're gonna get into those later. Um, and new for this year, we've got the DK206 and DK DeLong subsets. Those are insert sets. Those are sets that are inspired by the uber famous T206 sets, uh, tobacco sets, and the DeLong tobacco sets from years past. So as you guys can see, we're already getting way into a bunch of different um, nostalgic sets. We're getting into nostalgic players, and that is really what Diamond Kings is all about. And then what they do is they take an artistic approach to all of it. So it almost is Topps Inception inspired, um, but big bursts of color, big artistic um, interpretations of cards from the past and players in the present. So it gives it a very nostalgic, nostalgic feel. So another thing to know, as with most Panini 
products is there are obviously going to be a big long rainbow of parallels so this year's parallels in the base set include an artistic uh, an artist proof blue there's the the frames are back for another year so we've got blue gray plum and red frames we also get into artist proof golds those are going to be numbered to 49 litho proofs numbered all the way down to 25 the wood frames which you see it right which are to 13 then you've got the artist proof masterpiece the black frame masterpiece and the and the litho proof black frame masterpiece which are, which are all going to be numbered one of ones so how can you buy into this well there's a few different ways for panini diamond kings first is going to be the hobby box the hobby box uh should be red red bah, readily available and that comes with 12 packs there's eight cards in a pack so 96 total cards in a hobby box the current price on these is running about 85 dollars so that gets you to a cost per card of around 89 cents per card what you're guaranteed to get is one on-card auto and one relic in every hobby box and you get three of the frame parallels and although it's not mentioned here you also get 12 inserts per every hobby box then there is also the first off the line hobby box now those were actually released i believe it was last week and those basically offer the same exact setup however the uh those boxes included exclusive purple autos and relics. So there were, and those were really low numbered. You can get a box of those on the secondary market right now for around $130, maybe $140. So your cost per card goes up on that. But what you'd be looking for are those exclusive purple autos and relics. Then there are going to be retail formats. I'm sorry I don't have pictures of the boxes, but you are going to be able to get a blaster box of this in most big box outlet, uh, big box stores like Walmart and Target and all that. Uh, the blaster box is going to come with seven packs. So there's going to be five cards in a pack, so you get 35 total cards in a blaster box. It's going to run you 20 bucks. So your cost per card on that is down to 57 cents, and what you're guaranteed is one blue frame parallel card. Then you also have the fat packs. Now those are gonna be 20 cards per pack for $9.99. The cost per card on that, 50 cents. So that's gonna be your lowest cost per card and your lowest buy-in. And you are guaranteed to get a red frame parallel in those packs. Now there may be some other different retail formats, uh, but when you go online, the retail I think is gonna get be delayed a little bit. So I don't think you're gonna be seeing this hitting shelves tomorrow, but you should see it soon. But don't be surprised if you see some of those gray um, and some and the plum colored ones show up in like a mega box or something. I just can't find anything online that tells me about what those are at. So for right now, those are the different formats that you can buy into. So very affordable set, which makes it uh, the appeal on this set pretty broad. Um, some of the key cards. So for our base cards, here's what you've got. Number 15, Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth, always going to be a cornerstone of the set. And as you'll see as we start digging into this set further, Babe Ruth is featured heavily throughout. There's also Mickey Mantle. Now, Mickey Mantle is one of those cards that is uh, Panini exclusive. So we're going to include Mickey in there. And then we've got 58, Jordan Alvarez as a base card. So Jordan is in the set. Luis Ro Robert is in this set as well. And then as a short print, we have the Beau Bichette rookie. Now remember, um, anything cards number 101 through 170 is going to be a short print. So the Beau Bichette is actually a short print in this set, which is pretty cool, I think. And then when we look at parallels, auto short prints, relics, inserts, stuff like that, I think uh, some of the key cards this year are definitely going to be those DK206 and DK DeLong insert sets. Those are the ones that are inspired from the tobacco sets from years past. And then we've got the DK Materials Relics. Now, here's what's neat about those. It, there's a bunch of different parallels, and there are Babe Ruth Material Relics, Ty Cobb, Lou Gehrig, Jackie Robinson, Ted Williams. So some amazing relics from amazing stars of the past that you can pull in there. Not to mention relics from today's stars that are also available. Then we also have the Diamond Cuts Masterpiece. We'll dig into this later, but those are actual... Uh, <clears throat> those are actual cut autos of huge names like Ruth, DiMaggio, Musial, um, Williams, 
a ton of names in there. Then you've got the DK206 signatures. So you can also get that 206 set as a signature. Those are kind of tough to pull, but definitely some really cool uh, cards there. Um, finally, we've got the, the Recollection Collection buybacks. And although there's not a bunch of information on those yet, those are all going to be buybacked, autoed, cards so those should be some really nice cards if you can hit them fairly long odds on those but definitely ones that you'll want to be chasing in this set so who should collect this set i think first and foremost this is a nostalgic set you've got a ton of retired stars in here some huge names and then it brings it all the way through generations so you're going to go all the way back to the late 1800s the early 1900s the 50s um the 70s uh, the junk wax era and then today's stars so ton of players from all sorts of different eras of baseball so nostalgic collectors this is definitely a set for you if you collect hall of fame players there's a ton of them in this set so definitely hall of fame collectors are going to want to get in on this set then i also think that set builders uh set collectors this is a fun set it's 170 cards not too hard to build but because 70 of the cards are going to be short print it poses a little bit of a challenge uh, but overall i think that the fact that you get a good number of cards per hobby box should not be that tough of a set to build um I also think budget collectors. So you can get a lot of cool cards out of this at a very cheap price. The fat packs are going to give you framed, uh, framed uh, parallels. And I think that being that this is a Panini brand and they are very conscious about making it affordable for everyone to buy into, budget collectors, definitely a set you want to look into. You can get some really cool names and some really cool inserts and parallels and whatnot. Um, if you like relics, this is a set for you. At a very affordable price to buy in, you can pull some absolute monster relics out of here. And even if it's not an absolute, an absolute monster, there are some definite cool relics from a lot of great players from today's game, from yesterday's game, and from a lot of different eras. And then I also think finally, uh, collectors who enjoy artistic sets, um, this is this is an artist driven set. It very it reminds me a lot of Topps Inception, but with a nostalgic feel. Um, so and there's a ton of different artistic parallels that we, and we'll get into all of that here in a minute. But then there's also the people that shouldn't collect this. Uh, very first and foremost, if you collect prospects, there's not a lot of press. Uh, pr there's not prospects in this set. There are. Uh, rookies and veterans and retired stars but if you chase prospects this is a set you're definitely going to want to avoid and also if you're a premium hit chaser uh, the odds on hitting something super rare for example the babe ruth cut auto i mean it's going to be so hard to find those um, there are better sets that you can buy into if you're looking for uh, to spend your money it would cost you a lot more to buy stuff out of this set than it would to just buy something like Diamond Icons, which is coming out at the same time. Um, that's going to guarantee you a super rare hit. And then also, hey, look, if you're a Topps guy, if you love having the MLB logos, <clears throat> obviously Panini isn't going to give those to you. So obviously steer clear if you're one of those people. If you're a team collector, uh, if you like just collecting players on your favorite team right now, because of the fact that there's so many retired players in this set, if you're looking to collect current players that are on your favorite team, there's just going to be too many holes in this set. They do not cover off on teams all that well. They do cover off on a ton of retired stars from your teams. But if you're looking for the 8, 9, 10 starting lineup players, this is not a set for you. Um, and then we also have speculators and investors. Traditionally, Diamond Kings is not one of those sets that on the secondary market sets the fire to the world. A little bit of a soft set, definitely a set that nostalgic collectors go after, but the resale value on a lot of these cards is not going to be that much. You're better off sticking with flagship products. Um, and so, yeah, if you're a speculator investor, probably want to steer clear a little bit of this set. Um, so let's get into what this set really offers people. We'll start off with the inserts, and here's what you get. Uh, there's the aficionado insert, which is uh, one of those artistic ones, uh, artistic sets. 
and you can't and that's going to have 15 cards and the parallels you're going to get hollow blue to 99 and a masterpiece one of one then you have the all-time diamond king set that's 30 cards of one player from each team which are some of the best players to ever don the uniform from that team tons of parallels in this one you've got the proof the artist proof blue you've got the blue frame gray frame pl uh, plum frame red frame artist proof gold litho basically all the same ones that you have in your base set so the diamond kings ones those will be fun ones to collect you've got the artist palette that's going to be the 10 cards with a parallel of hollow blue and masterpiece you've got the aurora another artistically driven subset that's going to have 15 cards the blank slate subset that's going to have 15 cards and then you've got the dk206 which is going to have 20 cards that's what you see over at the right uh, with Ken Griffey Jr. Over, uh, over there. And that's got the parallels to with the hollow blue to 99 and the masterpiece one of one. Then you also have the DK DeLong set, which is going to have 10 cards, which is another tobacco inspired set, uh, which is a throwback set. <clears throat> so then we get into more of the inserts. Uh, long list of inserts in this set. So you've got the DK Originals. That's going to have 10 cards with your standard parallels. You've got the Downtown inserts, which are going to be the 20 cards set. You've got a Gallery of Stars insert set, which is going to be the 15 cards with parallels. Then you've got the In the Zone, which is 15 cards with its parallels. The Modern Art, another artistically driven insert set. That's going to have 20 cards as well. Uh, the parietal art, which is 20 cards as well. The pixel art, which is 20 cards. And then finally, the 3000. That's going to have 15 cards. And that has parallels of hollow blue and masterpiece. Obviously, that's going to feature players that have hit the 3000 hit threshold in their career. So then we also have a ton of autographs in this set. Uh, and we'll cover off on those real quick. The first ones are going to be the Diamond Cut Masterpiece. That's 19 cards that are, uh, that are numbered one of one. Those are all of your cut signatures, and those are some huge, huge, huge hits. You also have the DK206 signature. So this is that insert set, DK206. Tons of different uh, 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 parallels on this. So you can see the base set actually is only one card. It's Jordan. It will not be numbered, but then you've got hollow silver, gold, blue, purple, and masterpiece. And you can see that most of those are going to be fairly long odds. But if you can hit some of those, I think those are going to have some real value down the road. Uh, you also have the DK original signatures, um, which is what you see over to the right with Vladimir Guerrero over there with its own set of parallels as well. Then we go to what I think you're going to find in most of these boxes, the DK signatures. It's what you see over at the right over there uh, with Shohei Otani. Uh, there's 62 cards in that set. And then, of course, there is the parallel breakdown. We also have the uh, Recollection Collection Buyback Autos. Those are, uh, it's a 20-card set, and they're all going to be numbered to 25 or less. Tons of different great names that are going to be in there, and they're buyback autoed cards, so those should be pretty sweet. Uh, we also have patch autos in this set. We've got the DK Materials Signatures. Those are going to be uh, 61 cards, and though, here's where we get into... Uh, where I think some of the relics are really cool because some of these actually feature retired stars um, and some pretty short numbered ones. So you've got a gold, hollow blue, purple, and masterpiece parallels in those, but definitely be on the lookout for some of the retired stars in these patch autos. You've also got the DK quad material, so that's obviously what you see at the right over there with Boba Shett. Uh, that's got four different patches on one card. There's 13 cards in the base set and then various different number of cards in all of the parallel sets of silver, blue, purple, and masterpiece one of ones. 
and then we get into the relics now we obviously there's the patch autos which are relics but we have the bat kings which is what you see over at the right with roberto clemente uh tons of different parallels on that hollow blue uh purple masterpiece and as you can see again it features a lot of different retired stars so although i spelled joe dimaggio wrong i added an n you've got greenberg jackson maris um then you also go on to the DK materials checklist. I think you'll see a lot of these getting pulled out of boxes. Uh, 99 cards in the base set checklist with the standard silver, gold, blue, purple, and masterpiece parallels. And then we've got the quad materials this time without the autos. 25 cards on those. And we've got hollow blue, purple, and masterpiece parallels in those. Then we will round it out with Jersey Kings, which is obviously going to be Jersey Patches. 35 cards in that set with parallels as well. So with all that being said, as you buy into breaks on this, the breaks should be fairly cheap. I think a lot of people are going to be buying into breaks of this. Um, and I, if you're on eBay and you're targeting different teams, I've got a couple different sleeper teams for you, ones that might surprise you. But I think if you buy into these and if you get them at the right price, you'll end up, it'll end up paying dividends for you by the end of the break. So my first team is actually well, a big surprise. I do not think it, it, this team is showing up on the target teams all season long, but I'm glad they have finally made an appearance. And that is... The Arizona Diamondbacks. They have seven base cards and nine autos in this, nine different autos you can pull out of this set. And there's some big names too. Randy Johnson's in there. Um, so definitely some cool ones there. And I think the Diamondbacks will be surprisingly cheap in breaks for this. And if you can end up getting one of those Randy Johnsons, uh, I think Kurt Schilling's in there as well. Um, I think some of those autos are going to be really sweet. Another one of my sleeper teams, surprisingly, is the Cleveland Indians. So they've got nine different base cards. I don't know that this is really going to be considered a sleeper team, but they have a surprisingly large amount of autos in this set. And they're from a very good Indians team. Um, and keep in mind, the Indians have a ton of history. So you've got a great mix of autos from retired stars and current stars on the Cleveland Indians. 13 different autos in that team set. Houston Astros going to cost you a little bit of money, but they do have 12 different autos and 12 different relics. So chances are in a box, it's probably not unheard of that you would hit the Astros fairly common in most box breaks. So if you're getting into a case, the Houston Astros, probably not a bad team to be buying into. Then we have the Dodgers. The Dodgers have a ton of base cards. They've got 12 different base cards, and they've got more autos than anyone in the set. The Dodgers have 16 different autos and 16 different relics. So just a ton of Dodgers cards in this set. Obviously, with the Dodgers history, it does not surprise me that they have that many. Um, going right on to that nostalgic feel, obviously, you're going to have a bunch of Yankees cards. So you've got 13 different Yankees cards with 13 different autos. Now here's what's interesting about that. Five of the different autos that you can pull out of there, um, five of them are cut signature autos. So those are those DK cut signatures, um, which are one of ones. Five of those belong to the New York Yankees. So definitely they're gonna be expensive, but if you can get them at the right price or if you get lucky on a random break, the Yankees are a great team to have in this. And then finally, I'm gonna round it out with the Padres. Padres obviously have a lot of good players in their past. You've got eight different base cards, uh, a lot of young stars, Fernando Tatis, all those uh, players, Manny Machado. Uh, you got 11 different autos in there, all mixed with retired stars and current stars. So those are the teams that I would target if you're looking at buying into a Diamond Kings break here in 2020. So with all that being said, that brings us to... What are the overall positives of this set? First and foremost, it's an affordable set and they've got a ton of the key names throughout the history of baseball. If you name a name from the 70s, if you name a name from the 50s, if you name a name from the early 1900s, chances are their name is in this set. Um, and it's a very affordable buy-in, which I think is really cool. Um, I also feel that the art 
really brings out kind of a modern and nostalgic feel all at the same time. They've done a great job with it. It's the Diamond King set. It's a little bit of a veteran set in regards to its, its own history. Um, and they've always really, really kind of been art forward on this thing. But they give it a modern feel as well. There's a little bit of Topps Inception, while at the same time we go all the way back to like T206 design. So I think that's really cool. I think that there's some really good relics uh, in this set. I mean, we're, when you talk about the fact that you can pull Babe Ruth relics and Ted William relics, and these boxes are less than $100, really, really cool relics in here. Some of them are even autoed for a very, very affordable set. Then when we look at the autos, because there is so many retired stars, it's got a, it's got a decent auto checklist. Not a ton of filler, but... It, there is, I, I, I mean, I won't make any bones about it. There's there's a few filler cards in there, but there's plenty of good autos to chase. If you buy a box or two, chances are you're going to land a, a good auto. Um, then I also think that it's, it's a very nostalgic set. And in the hobby right now, we have a lot of people that are getting back into the hobby. They're collecting. Uh, they remember the cards they collected in their youth. They remember Ken Griffey Jr. They remember Tony Gwynn, players like that. Um, and a lot of those players are featured in here. So I think it's a very inviting set for those type of people that are just getting back into the hobby and like seeing the names of the people they collected when they were a kid. Uh, and even if you've got grandpa collecting, he's going to see names like Maris. He's going to see, th uh, he's going to see names like Williams. He's going to see names like Hank Aaron. So definitely, definitely a nostalgic set. And then I also think that it's a smart base checklist. Uh, the short prints being that there's 70 of them, you've, it, it makes it to where it's a really fun set to collect and it's challenging but not impossible. So it's a smart base checklist. Um, and when you look at the base checklist, you've got all your rookies, you've got a ton of greats in there. So really, really, really smart checklist. They did a good job on that this year. Then I... Another positive is definitely going to be that unlike a lot of sets that have come out like, uh, lately, if you go to a store, you're probably going to be able to find this set on the shelves. If you want to go online and buy some, it's going to be available online. This is not a set that is so in demand that everyone has just bought it up immediately with bots and all of that other and all of that other stuff. If you want to get into this, I think it's going to be a fun thing to open and I think it's actually going to be available. But then, of course, with every set, there's negatives. So, well, first and foremost, I think the big negative is some of the big hits that I've been talking about, like the Babe Ruth, because this is released in a hobby and retail format. Obviously, the production goes up, uh, so there's a lot more cards, so the odds become longer on hitting one of those big, big, big premium hits. And because of that, you also end up with the soft resale value. It, this is not a set that is highly uh, coveted on the secondary market. So just know that going in. If you pull the Gavin Lux uh, rookie card out of this, if the Topps Series 1 is going for 5 bucks, this one's going to go for 3 The re The soft resale value on this set is just, it, it, it is a fact. But keep in mind, there's a nostalgic factor, that, uh, a factor to this set. Then the other thing, it is Panini, so the no logos makes for very predictable card images. You're going to see a bunch of people with gloves in front of where logos would be. As you see Cody Bellinger over there on the right, a bunch of swings, um, and you're going to see that card after card after card where you see the back of them more than you see the front of them, and that is to hide the fact that they're not able to show logos. So it just makes for a very predictable action card if you will one other thing which is what i've also noticed out of panini select which is the big rookie card names are not really in the high number short prints the boba shit is it would have been nice to have seen them put a couple more of the big names aquino and all that but they did not do that they kept a lot of the big name rookies so more people can find them in the lower numbered cards I think it would have been cool to make those cards a little bit harder to chase. Uh, they made the Boba Shet that way, but that is about the only big name rookie that you're going to get out of the high number short prints. 
The other thing is when we look at the patch relics, because of the big, bold artistic design, sometimes the patches get lost with all the other color and you don't actually realize you're looking at a patch. That Boba Shet card we showed a while back is a great example of that. The colors are so bright and vivid, the patch actually loses a little bit of its pop and pizzazz. Then finally, there's no prospects to chase in this set. Don't know if that's really a negative. It's not really a set that's designed that way, but I always like to see a couple prospect cards in a set if you if you can uh, if you can get away with that. So, with all that being said, that brings us to our one cent sensational set rate. So, like I said at the beginning of this, here's how this works. We're going to rate this set on ten different categories, and that will. And we're going to rate each category on, on a scale of 1 to 10. So, how does Panini Diamond Kings rank on the 1 cent sensational set ranking? Well, here's how I broke it down. First, we have Appeal. I do think that because this is such an affordable set, and it's got a lot of big names in it, past and present, that it does have a lot of appeal. It's got an artistic design. Uh, it, I think the price point's really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a six. I think you've got some investors that'll totally steer clear of this set. Uh, but as overall, just everyday hobbyists, I think this is a set that a lot of different people are gonna like. Uh, in regards to the base set checklist, I'm gonna go ahead and give that a seven. Uh, take a couple points off for the fact that the high number short prints don't have a ton of the big name rookies in it and I think that would have been cool and being that it's only 170 cards you, there's not a lot of team set building that you can do out of this set where it's covering off on a lot of today's stars but again it is not a set that's supposed to do that in regards to the inserts I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7.5 I think they did a great job on putting a lot of inserts in there some of them i think are a little bit repetitive in regards to it's another artistic insert but i do like the 3000 hits ones and i love the fact that they've got the t206 and delong inserts in there so overall i think they did a great job on the inserts i'm going to go ahead and give that a 7.5 then when I look at the parallels and the variations, did a great job on the parallels this year. The frame borders are back. Everyone loves the frame borders. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give that a seven. In regards to the auto checklist, I'm gonna give that a seven as well. A little bit of filler, obviously with some of these, especially in retail format, you get a little bit of filler. And then the other downside of, with Panini is some of them are sticker, uh, well, actually all of them are sticker autos. I would like to see Panini trying to get more on-card autos here in the future. But overall, for the fact that you can get a ton of Hall of Fame uh, and, and retired stars, and you can also get rookie autos out of here. Overall, a strong checklist. I'll give it a seven. Pack odds and production, we're gonna put it middle of the road. It is not gonna be as big as some flagship products, but it is retail released. So the pack odds go uh, up and the production goes up. And then that means our production number has to go down. So we're gonna go ahead and give it a five. Card quality, definitely a different feel to these cards. They, uh, with, the art, with the artistic representations, you're gonna get a lot of textures. So kind of neat, all sorts of different textures and feels to these cards. So we'll go ahead and give card quality a seven. The historical value, we're gonna take that down to a four. Some of the autos, some of the relics are gonna be worth a lot of money. However, the standard uh, rookie cards and stuff gonna be priced a little bit lower than some of your flagship sets. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a four. Artistic value, they do a great job. This is an artistic set. I'm gonna go ahead and give that an eight. The reason I don't give it even higher is the fact that you end up losing a little bit of the relics and stuff. It maybe it feels almost maybe a little too designed. Then finally we have cost value. I do think that for the price of this set, it is a great set to buy into. Lots of, lots of different fun cards. If you're a nostalgic collector, this is a cheap set to buy into. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a seven. So where does this all end up? Here's how the sensational set ranking works. We're gonna add up all these scores. Now, if it ranks between 86 and 100, it's a five star, five star set. You should be running out right now and buying this stuff. If you get down to four stars, that's gonna put you right in that 
that area of like wow what a really good set probably really good cards definitely one that you would want to invest in unless there's something diabolically opposed like for example if you collect prospect players it's a set you might want to avoid three stars going to take you down to a solid st set but maybe not one that everyone wants to chase so that's where we get into our final rating for panini donruss diamond kings as you can see the final rating is a 65.5 so it is a bore it is a borderline three star four star uh it will go down on the one cent sensational set rating as a four star product i think for the fact that you get a lot of neat autos out of here with your retired stars current stars your rookies you've got great relics you've got an innovative insert set you've got a fun set to collect and you've got an affordable price all of those things add up to make this a surprisingly good set so how does that rank amongst all the other sets that we've already reviewed in 2020 that puts panini diamond kings squarely in the fifth position of the top 10 so we still have bowman at the top with 82 however this ranks kind of right below top series one which was a very strong set and right above tops tier one which we just reviewed last week tier one is a very expensive set uh but it loses the price point on it's weird and yes you do get two autos i actually think the panini diamond kings is almost the same exact set with a better checklist at a much much more affordable price you just don't get some of those huge big hits out of diamond kings that you would out of tier one so i think that's kind of right where it should be and that guys is my review and in-depth guide to panini diamond kings 2020 let me know in the comments below if you're going to be buying into this what you think about the review if you think i'm off my rocker if you think that i've rated it too low too high would love to get you guys' feedback if you like these reviews we do them all the time if you're not subscribed you probably want to subscribe now so you can be up to date on all of the latest releases that come out in the 2020 card collecting season so be sure to subscribe. Be sure to hit that bell so you know when the new set guides come out. And if you haven't already, please throw over to first and hit that like button for me. But that, guys, I hope you are being good to your neighbors, being good to your family, being good to your friends. I hope that in your personal pack rips, you guys are hitting fire. And with that, I'm going to sign off. Until next time, guys, take care.